Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the RG353M. The M stands for metal, because this is one of like the deluxe versions when it comes to Ambenic handheld. I think it's pretty damn cool, and it is something, yeah, saying it, next level. Just next level shizzle when it comes to handhelds. Personally, I'm just a big fan of these metal ones, and I already have a couple of them in my collection. So inside the box, we're not going to get a lot of stuff. We're going to get ourselves like the wipes, the cleans, and there is a screen protector. And then we have like the cable or USB cable for connecting. With Embenic, we do get ourselves like more like the deluxe manuals, basically explaining how everything works. So if you have any questions, we say like check out the manual. But the reason I really love these handhelds is because they look not only amazing, but also like they feel so more solid with a metal casing. They also sell it with an adjustable plastic fantastic case, and those are not bad at all, but just more like this little bit of a premium feeling. Embernick is basically one of those companies that creates a lot of different handhelds. I think the other brand was GKD that also basically released a couple of those metal versions, but you don't hear a lot from them nowadays. So what you're going to get is absolutely like a pretty cool piece of technology, but take consideration when it comes to these handhelds, you also pay a premium price. A little bit filled on here. So there we have like the ABXY button, select start is basically layout. Then we have like the D-pad itself, two analog sticks. At the top we're going to get Micro switch shoulder buttons, and I must say the shoulder buttons already when you're going to put them on this position, you can see like they have a different level. And I think that is absolutely great because when you're going to play, it's so much easier than basically like use the shoulder buttons in general. But again, I'm not the biggest fan of this. Like the handles depends of let's say the way how they configured everything. And I mean like the size itself. But in overall, like the position is way better than I've seen in my previous, let's say models, like the retro game 350. At the left side, we're going to get ourselves the volume rocker. They solve, love to call this, but of course, an active like volume control. And yeah, when you're looking at the way how in depth it is, it's not like the best position, but when holding the handheld like this, I don't press it that often. And again, yeah, if you will like accidentally press it sometimes, yeah, maybe would it be like a better position to put it at the bottom part or yeah, there is no room at the top part because at the top part, we're going to get ourselves different connections. Then we have like the F button over here, also micro switch. We have two type C's, one for charging, HDMI mini out, and then we have like the headphone jack out. And at the right side, do we get ourselves the on off switch? And then we have like the reset button. But when it comes to the right side, we do get ourselves the on and off switch and the reset button. They are like in depth, so that means you cannot press them that like easily, accidentally. So you need to do a little bit of effort powering it on. Okay, so let's power on the device itself and let's see if this bloody thing even works. And over here we have like the indication when it comes to the power. So everything what you're going to need is on the handheld. That brings us to the bottom part where we have like two SD cards. One is basically for the firmware and the other one is for the storage. Another thing I really love about this device, that we do have like two tiny speakers over here at the bottom. And when holding them, they sound absolutely amazing. I just will give you like an example how this will sound. Let's grab the camera and the microphone and I'll give you an example. So when powering on, you do get yourself like a very fancy menu. And when it comes to compatibility, yeah, I must say like we do have like similarities when it comes to previous models of the Embernic. I think that is my opinion, a little bit of the problem nowadays. We do have like so many cool different form factors. So I think there is a handheld for everybody with all kinds of different displays, like resolution, stuff like that. But overall, when it comes to let's say compatibility, there is no places to compatibility so far I know, and some GameCube Wii stuff like that. So up to PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, stuff like that will run okay. Oh, okay, better said, it runs amazing. But let's take a close look at some games, and of course, not to forget, Wicked Nerdy Talk. A couple of things I really love to know with this thing is like how is in general the D-pad. I think maybe you also want to know. So I must say the touch itself is absolutely great. I personally really love it. It's like this wrong travel D-pad. I must say, of course, the position, I'm very glad they did this. Also when holding it, if you need to use both yeah, analog sticks, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't really like this. Most of the time I only use like basically like old school games that were used like the D-pad and the ABXY button. The ABXY button, basically what you're going to get is like your typical like button so we're going to get with quite a long travel i don't be very curious if they're going to get sticky because you do see some wear and tear on the side of the button but nevertheless so the joysticks i just want to give you like a quick look you can see like there is some grip at the side i must say they are very nice also we do have like a click underneath 
Like I mentioned before, we have the F button over here. And what I really love about it, they reconfigured this in Retro Arc. Then we're going to get ourselves like the quick menu. With the quick menu, we can restart the game, close content, take a screenshot, but also we can make a quick load, quick save. An option I really love. And if you want to tinker with the options, you can even do that over here. So I think it's pretty damn cool that we have like a lot of options when it comes to, let's say this device itself. It's super easy to use. So one other thing that you can tinker with is the internal resolution. It has been set to 320 by 240 but you can even set it to 640 by 480 so if you want to mess around with this sometimes you will have like less performance but overall let's take a close look at 320 by 240 so i think that's something that i really love about these handhelds compared with the cheap stuff that i mainly like review here they have like stuck with the stuff that you're getting and this you can just tinker with it if you want to all right let's start a little bit with dead alive and the reason why because this is quite the many game you can hear that it struggles a little bit a little bit of a bummer. So one of the things that you can do, for example, you can implement frame skip and mess around with the option to get a little bit better performance. But let's try a different game on the same platform. But when you're going to try a different game, you will see we do have like way better performance now. Didn't miss the sound effect over there. Another thing you cannot hear, that is a implement with vibration. And it works pretty damn good with some emulators. Here we have the sound effect. <laughs> I love that, that voice. <laughs> Alright, next up let's try some Nintendo DS. So with the shoulder buttons, we can basically switch between the displays. I keep blooding pressing the wrong button. Oh, that's so annoying sometimes. Gameplay. Is this the right one? Yeah, there he is. Also here, the vibration motor seems to be working fine. You can switch it this way. I think it's pretty damn cool. This is basically the way how you should play it. All right, so now we're gonna play it like that. But absolutely great. Let's switch between. Oh yeah, I messed it up. Oh, there we go. I need to get used to controls, but if you're going to get hang of it, it's one of the ways to play. I'm just being honest, I'd rather play this on a normal DS. But when it comes to NES, I think it's one of those ways to play on the device. Like, and it runs pretty damn good. So next up we want to try is some PlayStation 1. This is a system that runs pretty damn good of a lot of, let's say, devices nowadays. Okay, so the next test I wanted to do is, let's see if we can do some moves over here, if I'm going to get the chance. This is basically one of the ways I wanted to test it, but I don't notice any like, weird thing going on. Even the supers come out easy, very easily. So I'm just gonna be honest, I love this D-pad. So it's absolutely amazing. Like beautiful display, amazing sound, and a good D-pad. Oh yeah, I'm happy when it comes to fighting games here. Okay, so basically the benchmark for these things are like PlayStation Portable. But even do have like great performance with some games, it's going to be a little bit of a mix performance if you ask me but when it comes to PlayStation Portable we also have the option to tinker with the emulator itself because we can just have like a lot of improvements when you're going to mess around with it but let's first start off this game oh crap I mean you can see like the game really pretty damn good next thing I want to do is getting into the settings oh messing it up over here so the next thing I want to check out is just to see what they enabled so frame skip it's still off so it runs on the normal speed auto frame skip has been enabled and we have like one times psp resolution so everything seems to be looking very nice so the next thing we're going to do is show the fps over here let's continue we can also make a quick load quick save if you want to all right so let's move on to the joystick 
So what you can see over here, like this game runs absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to check it out and just see if we can run a different game. No, I don't want to make it. All right, let's try a different game. Let's try a more demanding game, just to see how we're actually going to get performing. Again, it dips, uh, it really dips down, but now it will get some um, great speed. And I'm getting my ass whooped here. Yep, that's a fact. But if you want to look into God of War stuff like that, don't really bother. Alright, so next up let's try a little bit of the all-famous GoldenEye. And I must say that I am not a biggest fan of the controls in general. Oh man, I really need to get used to this. And here you can already hear that it stutters. Yeah, so... So in general, like, also when it comes to the positioning of the joystick, eh, not a big fan of this. And yeah, you did hear some stutters here and there. Okay, so the reason I wanted to choose this game, there was a lot of stuff that runs pretty damn good, like Diddy Farting, uh, I mean racing. The thing is, I just want to show you a couple of games that will struggle sometimes, just to give you, like, an honest idea how N64 can run on a device like this. I mean, with some optimization and a better firmware, and you know, and like all the yaddy yaddy, it will be getting better, but I just wanted to show you what's out of the box and what we're going to get. And we're going to get into the game. It's quite this, it's quite like running pretty good, basically. Seriously, it's so much fun. But due of the resolution of the display and some games, you can see we have like some black bars over here with Sonic Advance. But the overall emulation performance is pretty damn good. So the reason I don't want to like focus too much on the old school stuff because that runs pretty damn good on this device. So if you just want a certain handheld that plays a lot of old school games up to PlayStation 1, I think in model like this is pretty damn good. The device itself comes of course with positive and negative sides. Personally I really love this device, but when you're looking at the perspective like from having already a handheld and having like an older model that has also PlayStation 1 support and Dreamcast, in my opinion there's not like a big improvement over here. It's more like if you're searching for something new and you love landscape models and you want to play fighting games for example like me, I think it would be cool to have one of these. Metal, they weighed a little bit heavier than the plastic version, but again, it will give like a more like a necessary quality feel. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.